so this is a continuation video for the permutation problem so just in case if you haven't watched the previous video go and watch that video in that I have discussed the solution so in the previous solution that I discussed we were using an extra map array while and an extra data structure in the recursion over here we will not be using an extra map or an extra data structure to form the permutation instead we are gonna use a bit different technique of swapping to generate all the permutations so let's check it out how we are going to do this so assume this is the uh, array that we are working with and the size of this is 3 so initially when you start off you will be having a pointer over here right right at 1 first step that we are going to do is we are going to try everyone at the first this position that is the 0th index we are going to try everyone at the 0th index so what we do is we swap one with one remember this we swap one with one so it makes sure that this one is at the first position if you did not understand this you will please stay with me a bit so i swap this one with one so i'm making sure that this one is taking the first position and after that i will move this pointer to two okay stay with me you will understand the next step that i'll do is i'll try to have this two yes i'll have i'll try to have this two at the starting position so what I will do is, I will tell swap 1 to 2, yes, so this 1 gets swapped to 2, so you will have 2, 1, 3. Now the other thing that I can do is, I can have this 3 at the starting position, so I will say swap 1, 2, 3, so when I swap 1, 2, 3, I will have 3 at the starting, I will have 2 and since I have swapped 3 to 1, 1 will go at the back. So since I have done for the first position, every time I will move to the second, this one, first index. Since the 0th index has been done, I move to the first index. And you can see, I am considering a permutation which starts with 1. I am also considering a permutation that starts with 2. And at the same time, I am also considering a permutation that starts with 3. Let's move forward. So over here, since I am looking for the second guy, I am looking for this guy, the first index guy. So what I am going to do is, I am going to swap 2 with 2, so that the 2 stays where it is, allowing this permutation to happen, where 2 stays where it is, so I will move to the next. What are the other options? I can have a 3 at the second position, can I? Yes, I can. So what I will do is, I will say swap 2 to 3, saying that, let's take 3 and put it onto the second position so i take 3 and put it into the second position so 3 will go here so once that goes you can go over here right let's perform this you are at the last position do you have any right numbers no so that means you only have one possibility for this index you only have a one possibility for this index so you're going to say let's swap 3 to 3 so I will ultimately get something as 1, 2, 3 as my final permutation. So the moment you have decided for all the three indexes, like over here you decided for the first index by swapping 1 with 1. Over here you decided for the second index where you swap 2 with 2. Over here you decided for the third index by swapping 3 with 3. So you decided for all the three indexes. So the last at the last whatever array you are having so you are having an array like 1 2 3 so this is one of your permutations right so since this is over once this pointer goes outside and you have decided for all the three people so it's time to go back now since you have decided for every one let's go from here so for 2 there was one recursion left that was swap 2 with 3 so when you swap 2 with 3 you will get this 3 over here and this 2 over here. Now what are the options for this particular index? You just have one option that is saying swap 2 to 2. So if you swap 2 to 2, you will get 1 comma 3 comma 2. So you have decided for this third index. Now once you have decided for this third index, your pointer goes out. And the moment your pointer goes out, you can say you decided for the first index over here, for the second over here, for the third over here. So ultimately you generated this permutation. 
So let's take this permutation as 1, 3, 2. So again, since you have done for this index, you can go back. Now this has no other recursive calls, so it goes back. Now for this guy, there were two possibilities. One was swap 2 with 2, while the other was swap 2 with 3. Now the, both the possibilities have been done. So let's get back. So you did see whenever you decided to keep 1 at the first position, you generated these two permutations. Now let's check it out for this. What options do you have for the second? You can say, let's keep 1 where it is. So I decide to keep 1 where it is. So swap 1 to 1. That will mean I'm keeping 1 wherever it is. So it keeps 1 wherever it is and takes the pointer to the next. What can be the other options? The other option can be, you are saying, let's bring 3 over here. So that will make 2, 3, 1 if you decide to swap 1, 2, 3, right? Right after this. So you perform this recursion call. So over here, what are the options you have for this index? You only have one option that is swapping the current 3 with the current 3 so that the 3 stays wherever it is. So you will ultimately get... 2, 1, 3 and the moment you get this, you go out of index because you have decided for all the 3. First you decided to swap 1 with 2 which made sure that the 2 was at the first. Then you decided to swap 1 with 1 which made sure that the 1 was at the second. Then you decided to swap 3 with 3 which made sure that the 3 was over here. So this will give you the, the permutation 2, 1, 3. So the moment this crosses, so the recursion is over. For this 3, there was only one option. So you can say that the recursion is over. But for this, there is one recursion of swap 1 with 3, where you say that 3 will be at the second position. That is still left. So let's do that. So if 3 is at the second position, you keep it there. So if 3 is at the second position, now it's your time to decide for the last index. Now you add the last index. Now what are the options do you have for the last index? You can say swap 1 is to 1. So you decide to swap 1 with 1 because 1 is the only option for this particular index. So I swap it, right? So when I swap it, I will get 2, 3, 1. So the 1 stays wherever it is. So I can see at the first time I decided to swap 1 with 2 which gave me 2, right? After that I decided to swap 1 with 3 which gave me 3 at this index. Then I decided to swap 1 with 1 which gave me 1 at this index. Ultimately at the end, I got 2, 3, 1 because once I have done for this index, my pointer will go out. So I can say the recursion is over because the pointer goes out. So I go back. From here, I go back. Now, for from here, both the recursions are over. So let's get back. So I can say the swap 1 with 1 is over. The swap 1 with 2 where I take 2 as the first guy is over. Now it's time to take swap 1 with 3 which says that 3 will be at the starting. So 3 stays at the starting. Now what are the options do you have? Let's check it out. Now since 3 is at the starting, what are the options for the second index? I can say I'll still have 2 at the second index, which means let's swap 2 with 2. Right? What are the other options? I decide that this one is being brought here. So what I can do is, I can swap 1 to 2. Right? So what this will do is, if I keep the 2 over here, I'll still have 3, 2, 1 where the pointer will go over here. So, these, so the 2 stays where it is. So if I decide to swap 2 to 1, I'll make sure that after 3 comes across 1. So I made sure that 1 is at the second index. Now this recursion call will get executed at first. So what are the options that you have for this index? You can only have one over there. So I can say swap 1 to 1. So you will be left off with 3, 2, 1. So once the pointer crosses, I can say this is one of my permutations. So let's take it 3, 2, 1. Over here, this recursion call is over. So let's get back. This recursion call is over. Let's get back. Now let's come over here. Swap 2 with 1, which makes sure that the pointer is over here. Now what are the options do you have for this? I can say the 2 will be swapped with 2 because I have only one option for this index. So I'll ultimately get 3, 1, 2 with a pointer crossing this. So 
So since the pointer crosses, I can say this is one of my permutations. So this is over. The recursion is over for this. Goes back. The recursion is over. Goes back. The ultimate recursion is over. Goes back. So ultimately, when the all recursions are over, I was able to generate all the permutations, and this will be my answer. So let's check out the pseudo code from this recursive tree. So can I say initially I'm having a pointer. So let's assume this pointer is something which is known as index. Okay. And initially you are the zeroth index. So I can say you are initially at the zeroth index and you're having the array because this is the array, right? This is the array that you're carrying. So this is your stuff. What did you do when you're at the index zero? You did not do anything. You initially swapped one with one, basically saying that if you're at the zeroth index, you swapped zero with zero, right? What was the next thing that you did? The other recursion call was you swapped zeroth index with the first index saying that this and this was swapped then you swapped one and three saying that the zeroth index was swapped with the second index so i can actually say that you tried swapping every index where i was from index till n minus one that is what you did you carefully observe it was zero you tried swapping zero zero then you tried swapping zero one then you tried swapping 0, 2. That is what you did. From every index to n minus 1, you tried to swap it. Like over here, you had the first index. So you had two options to swap 2, 2 or to swap 2, 3. So that means you tried to swap the index 1, 1 and you tried to swap the index 1, 2, isn't it? You tried 2 and 3 to swap. So you start from the given index because currently you had 2. So you start, you're starting to swap from this. So I can say you are basically swapping a of i, that's index, wherever you are currently at, with the a of i, where i will be your loop variable from index to n minus 1. That is how you're swapping. Now, what about the transition? The next recursion call is making sure that this pointer moves to the next. Once this is done, you're making sure that 1, 2, 3, it goes to 3. So I can say you're moving to the next index. So you're basically moving to the next index, right? Along with the array. And what is the base case? If I talk about the base case, the moment your pointer reaches beyond this, because once you reach here, you swap 3, 3, and your pointer starts to reach beyond this. So that's the moment you stop. So we can stop at that moment. So I can say the base case will be very simple. If my index has done all the indexes, it means it will reach n. That's the moment I can say whatever array I have, that will be a part of my ultimate answer, right? So what is the intuition behind swapping? The intuition is very simple. You're basically trying that every number should be at a particular index. Like over here, you try it for 1, you try it for 2, you try it for 3. And that's only possible if you swap with the right possible elements. You try to bring those right elements to your current index. That's why we swap. That's a simple intuition. Now let's discuss the time complexity. So if I discuss the time complexity, we are generating n factorial permutations. And there's a big O of n loop that you're running, right? There's a loop that you're running. And I can also say you will be taking a n time whenever a permutation gets entered into your data structure of answer that's going to take time the time complexity is n factorial into n but you did save a lot in your space complexity we're not using any data structure that we used in the previous solution neither we are using a map so you're not using any space complexity apart from the auxiliary space of the recursion depth over here the recursion depth is big of n so a big of n of the recursion space and a big of n factorial space for returning the answer. Apart from that, our recursion is not using any extra space. So we are saving a lot in the space complexity in this approach. So let's discuss the Java solution. So you can see they are asking you a list of list of integers. That is all permutations in a list. And they've given you the nums array. So what they've done is they have declared initially a list of list of integers. And now I have called the recursion you know, the initial index that we started off with the zeroth index. So I call the recursion with the zeroth index. And I pass on the array 
as well as the answer array which is going to store all the permutations so let's have this index which is over here then the array so that is what i take the index and the array now you know what is the base case whenever you reach the end so that is what i've written whenever i reach the end i just take this nums and i put it into a list of integers once i have done that i add that list into our ultimate data structure that is answer and i can stop the recursion over here because that is where we stop what about if it is not i know i'm going to swap with everything from index till n minus 1 so index till n minus 1 over here. So let's swap. So if you swap it, this is how you swap it. This is the swap function. So it will make sure it swaps. And now I call the next recursion. The next recursion is very simple. Your pointer moves ahead. So your pointer will move to index plus 1. And you do the swap. And whenever you come back from the recursion, make sure you re-swap it. It's a simple backtracking. Whenever you come back from the recursion, make sure you re-swap it. So that is what you do. So once this entire recursion is over, I can say the answer will be storing all the permutations which you can return and that will be your answer. So let's discuss the C++ code. So you have to return a vector of vector which will be storing all the permutations. What I given is a nums array. At the first, I declare a vector of vector which is going to store all my permutations. Over here, I'm declaring a recursive function which starts with index 0 because you know it starts with index 0. Right after that, I am just passing on the array as well as the data structure which is going to store all the permutations. Now you know what is the base case. Whenever you reach, your pointer reaches the end. So the moment this index reaches the end, you can say you have, you have taken a decision for every index. So you can take this nums array, whatever is your nums array at the end, and you could put it into your answer vector. Once you have done that, you can return. What about the other stuff? If the base case is not satisfying, that means your pointer is either here or either here or either here somewhere. So what you need to do is you need to go on from index to n minus one. That is I've, that is what I've done. I've gone from index to n minus one, and I've made sure I've swapped. Just make sure you swap. So these guy these guys will get performed. Once these swaps are done, make sure you call the recursion for the next state because if the pointer is here, you have done it for this guy. Let's take the pointer to the next guy. So the next pointer will go to index plus one. Once you come back from the recursion, please make sure you re-swap it because for the next guy, the swap will not be considered. So please make sure you re-swap it. Backtracking, simple backtracking. Once this entire recursion is done, I can say all the permutations will be in this answer. You can directly return in this line number 19. So this will be it for the C++ code. So guys, I hope you have understood both the approach for the given problem. So just in case you did, Please, please, please make sure you like this video. And if you are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video where I'll be discussing some other problem from the SD sheet.